It's Cyclone Sunday with Ben Bruns. Breaking everything down from the Channel Seed Studios. This is Iowa Everywhere. What is going on? Cyclone Sunday here on Iowa Everywhere. Victory edition today. Ben Bruns, Aiden Wyatt. Brunzy, how are we doing this morning? Good, man. It literally is Iowa Everywhere as we uh, <laughs> speed down 330 on the way back. So, uh, shout out to Clay. What's up, Clay? <laughs> yeah, what's up? Don't show far. Right. <laughs> there you go. Right. Truly Iowa everywhere. All right, Iowa State 34 17 winners over Cincinnati last night, getting back on track. Uh, I want to talk about the offense first. The importance of having a third option on that side of the football. Higgins and Noel were essentially double teamed the entire night. Gabe Burkle, six catches for 73 yards, easily his best game offensively as a cyclone. Yeah, for sure. You know, he he made clutch grab after clutch grab. And, you know, uh, Gabe's a guy who's really grown up over the last couple of years, right? Young player. Uh, and, you know, to be in that position where you have to execute at that high of a level in order for us to be successful. Um, you know, he's really become a go-to guy. And I think uh, that says a lot with a couple of injuries to uh, other guys in the tight end room. And uh, he was the difference maker in this game offensively for Iowa State because we were stuck a fair amount. Uh, you know, only 94 yards of offense in the first half. Lucky to have, have gotten, uh, you know, a, 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 tie, a tie game going into halftime. And, um, you know, he was able to... to to uh, keep drives alive and and also uh, you know help put us in a position to score points. So um, great great play by him. Uh, you know pretty pretty uh, pretty lackluster offensive performance for sure in the first half of this game for Iowa State and, and you know in part because um, Cincinnati was doing what you said right trying to take away the, the big uh, you know the big targets for Iowa State. Um, and Iowa State was not running the quarterback at all. And so, you know, that idea of our offense um, being able to, to be productive, you've got to run the quarterback some in this in this uh, setup. And I think Iowa State did that a little bit, maybe unintentionally late in the game, but uh, certainly a little bit more in the second half. Rocco had a big, uh, had a big run that, uh, you know, was a called play. Uh, early fourth quarter that that uh, changed the dynamic of the game, and then obviously the improvisation uh, on the high snap, where uh, it looked like we were going to run some sort of um, some sort of uh, counter action to the right, and uh, you know he just basically stuffed it up the middle for that touchdown. So um, we need to see more quarterback run in order for this offense to be successful going forward, especially when people are trying to take away that those deeper threats. Mm -hmm. Do you make anything of uh, Connor Moberly getting a, a snap? Yeah, I, lo I loved it. I loved it. I think that says a lot about uh, what Iowa State is wanting to do and is willing to do to be successful. And I think it says a lot about Rocco's mentality of like, okay, yeah, he's, he's good at running the football. I'm going to go out. What I didn't love about it, Aiden, you can't put in a package that you haven't practiced enough and expect to be successful, right? These guys get out on the field and they don't even know how to line up. And then, uh, you, you know, you you uh, you finally do get uh, lined up and it doesn't give you any kind of different advantage. Like, don't make it too hard, right? We talked about that last week. It's just, I, I totally believe in uh, bringing him in and letting him play and, and, you know, having him affect the defense a little bit differently. But you've got to have had the chance to make those plays productive. And and why flex your your, uh, your your play sheet into something else? Like, we've got stuff in the play sheet that he can just come up and, and run that everybody else knows what to do, and it's not some sort of, like, different package. I, and, and, look, I have no problem with the different package. Like, that's all good. The problem is when you don't execute the different package when you go out, right? And, and uh, you know, that's just part of the growth process. Uh, you got to know how long it takes and you got to execute on those installs. And, uh, you know, sometimes, especially with young guys, because that package had a couple uh, newer faces in it, which are good. Um, but, you know, you got to be able to go out on the field, line up, be crisp, run your play. Because otherwise, you're just you're putting pressure on yourself that you don't need to put. 
Mm-hmm. Agreed. Uh, do you think, kind of with all the injuries on the defensive side, that this offense is catering towards long, lengthy drives to try to get them as much of a break as possible? You know, I, I hadn't really considered that. I mean, you mentioned that before we started the broadcast, and I, I think that's a really um, – you know, having had just a minute or two to reflect on on that concept, I think you might be right. I really do. I, I think, you know, uh, folks are frustrated about the first down run plays, right? Frustrated about first down production in general. And you heard um, you heard the the players and staff talk about first down production uh, on the post game, right? And the fact that it needed to be better, uh, and it got a little bit better in the second half. Um, that that may very well be it, right? Um, but I, I don't hate play action on first down, right? I, I think that's a, a really uh, good option for Iowa State. I like the fact that Iowa State did a little bit more boot action with Rocco in this game um, as the game went on. Um, but maybe you're right that we are, you know, sort of favoring trying to, to uh, extend, trying to shorten games, right? Uh, extend drives uh, as opposed to just coming out and doing what we already know this offense does best which is click, 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 kind of tempo. Cyclone Sunday here on Iowa Everywhere. Iowa State 34-17 winners. Let's flip it to the defense. Uh, biggest thing, I think, Will McLaughlin came back for the first time this season. Um, what a difference it makes to have someone on defense like him in terms of a guy who really knows what he's doing out there. Yeah, you know, being able to start the play in the right place is a big deal. And, you know, uh, quickly read what's happening out there. And, uh, you know, I, I'm sure I'm sure Will's going to watch that film and go, man, I wish I had that extra little step and that extra little burst that I had before these injuries. Um, but I also think you don't get to that point, right, where you're at a game speed without playing something. So, um, you know, I, I think as he uh, continues to get healthier, continues to – you know, be able to uh, have more flexibility and, and uh, power generate, be getting his power to the ground in order to be able to close space. Uh, it's really going to help. But yeah, it, it, this the fact that Iowa State's linebacking core is getting deeper at this moment in time is a really critical thing because, you know, we've been uh, shorthanded in that for a long time and uh, it makes a difference big time. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I know we need to talk about Dom Orange too. You said before played we started. The ball. Yeah. He played ball. And, you know, he's getting held like crazy in this game. And it, pretty much every game. But he's getting held like crazy. And, you know, to to just keep making plays and get sideline to sideline. Uh, you know, he's more of a natural nose. But uh, playing him in the position, that four technique that we've got him playing in, I think is really going to feature him to a lot of NFL teams that, you know, um, can, can still evaluate talent really well, but I think seeing him make plays in space like this is really good for his future prospects. And, um, you know, I think he's a guy who could have a long NFL career as long as he stays healthy. And, um, you know, I think you're seeing him show up with a great motor when he's in there uh, and he's taking more, more reps. Yeah. You mentioned, you uh, mentioned uh, about one one drive that he had, right? Talk about that. Yeah. yeah. At the end of the first half, he had all three tackles to end a Cincinnati drive, which like is that. pretty rare for any defensive lineman anywhere. Facts. Facts. Yeah. Getting after it and, and like, really productive and, you know, uh, heady play, too. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's talk about the defensive backs. Malik Verdon was back this week. Bo Freeler and Jeremiah Cooper, I imagine, makes their life a little bit easier having him in the game. For sure, for sure. And, you know, the whole defense works better. Uh, and we talked last week about the fact that, like, when one guy makes makes some sort of decision, the next guy has to adjust to that decision, right? And so this defense sort of uh, evolves so quickly, and everybody knows what to do when someone else does something. And... You know, when you have younger guys in that don't have that experience, it gets to be a real challenge. And um, you see, you saw Iowa State be able to click in the secondary. I think, you know, there was kind of one long pass and then a handful of option play uh, attack that, you know, really 
caused Iowa State uh, a fit in the first quarter. And, and you know, let's talk about adjustments, too, because Cincinnati had 165 yards at the end of the first quarter. And uh, basically that for the rest of the game. And I think... Um, uh, as as my father-in-law said it, you know, it's the least impressive impressive win he's uh, he's seen uh, by the Cyclones, and you know, it was one of those days. It's like, oh gosh, come on, man! But uh, you know, at the end of the day, you win by 17 points, and um, you know, you break loose the run game at the end of the game, and um, you really shut down their passing attack. Other than the option run, which we didn't do a good job of supporting uh, in the alley, uh, but we got better at that as the game went on. We got better at that as, as uh, specific situations came up, and and you know guys were getting up to the line of scrimmage and stringing those plays out and making uh, tackles for loss or, or a short game as opposed to you know, those bigger runs that we saw early in the first <laughs> early in the first quarter. Yeah. So one question I got for you, I would say you gave up 287 rushing yards, but only gave up 66 passing yards. Where's the threshold of like, hey, we're okay giving up X amount of rushing yards if we're going to give up less than 70 passing yards? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think getting off the field is probably the real key for Iowa State and, uh, you know, how they do it. it you know, Nobody's going to look at that box score and say, oh, I, I, I love that, right? They're going to look at that box score and say, yeah, I don't like giving up that kind of rushing uh, total. But, but you know, um, I think Cincinnati did, did a good job of taking advantage of what Iowa State, you know, uh, was was giving them and, and not putting their quarterback in a position where he did, had to try and win the game. Uh, you know, throw a drop back against a, a really experienced secondary, and the fact that he didn't throw an interception, you know, I think uh, is is emblematic of that because I was expecting him to. But uh, you know, hats off to Cincinnati for a good game player, um, and you knew they would have that, right? When you've got Tyson Fight, uh, who spent all this time on Matt's staff. Uh, it, it is that much harder to game plan against a guy who knows you as well as Tyson knows Iowa State, and uh, because he's going to impart that wisdom in in both the offensive and defensive side, mm-hmm. right? Um, so I think hats off to Cincinnati for a good attack of Iowa State. And I think same same is true for uh, you know Iowa State's defense of uh, really being. Um, good against the run after that first quarter. Yeah. I want to talk big picture here. Iowa State obviously escaping a two-game skid to get to eight and two. We talk about a lot how hard it is to win a game in college football. Take me through what this win might mean to the locker room. Uh, It's huge. It it really is huge. And I think, you know, you've got a the the test of the season, uh, you know, we always felt was going to be these last two games. And I think it still is. I really do. I I think this um, Utah team is playing a little bit better. They certainly expected to have great quarterback play all year long, and they have not. And so, uh, you know, that freshman is growing up some, but he can still make mistakes. So can Iowa State uh, force, you know, him to to make bad decisions and and get some pressure? Um, But then, you know, how about physically? How do we match up? Uh, Can we, can we, you know, uh, continue to get off the field against the running game at Utah. Um, you know, I, I think we can, I, but I think um, everybody's got to just continue to play at a higher level. And I think these last two games, um, winning this game sets you up for these last two games to really matter. Uh, and, and, you know, losing that game um, makes it really hard to keep the locker room going right to keep everybody you know uh continue to be excited about a season that everybody knew they they could have done more and so i think the goals are still out there i think it requires a lot of help uh you know from kansas and and uh uh and i would say it's got to be great but it's okay uh, kansas is playing maybe the best football in the big 12 right now 
Very well could be. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we said it last week, you know, they're the, they're the best three and six team in the country. It's not close. No, they're I mean, the best that, four and six team in the country. Yeah. I, I don't understand how that team, you know, obviously they lost a whole bunch of close games early in the season, but, uh, you know, uh, they, they're playing some football. So. Yeah. And like you said, I would say fans need to root for them next week against Colorado. This is a huge Jayhawk podcast right here, folks. <laughs> oh, I hate that. Yep, uh, I yep, that. I do too. But it's, it's reality of the situation, I guess, right? Got it, man. All right, I think that's all I got for you, my man. All right, dude. Good to see appreciate you. Appreciate you. Thanks, yep. everybody, for watching us. And, uh, you know, go Cyclones. Yeah, we appreciate everyone. This has been Cyclone Sunday here in the Channel Seed Studios for Ben Bruns, Aiden Wyatt. We will see you next week.